guys, welcome back to my art channel. If you're new, hi, I'm May, and I do digital fluid art and digital pour art with cells. And today we're going to be looking into how to create a marbled cell look onto your digital fluid art. If you haven't watched my bubble cells or transparent bubble cells tutorials, go check these or check those out because having that base will definitely help you with making your marble cells. So let's get started. We are doing this in Procreate. So once you have your Procreate open, we're going to be creating a new canvas. And I like to start with 5000 by 3500 with a higher DPI, just because again, I do sell my artwork online. But you can do any canvas you like, small or large. And yeah, let's get started. Once you create, you're going to shrink your canvas down to see all the edges. And now we're going to pick our color palette. I already pre-selected my color palette, and we're going to do some blues and tans with some black and white. Feel free to screenshot the screen here if you want to copy these colors and follow along exactly. With marble cells, you want to have a brush with texture. We're actually going to be using the fresco brush, and you want to have a lot of texture on your acrylic pour as well. So we're going to be using today the brush Stucco under painting. Make sure I'm on that white so we can kind of play with our brush size. And again, don't forget under settings, preferences, make sure to have your brush cursor activated so that way you can see it on the screen so you can kind of see how large your paint is going to lay down. And I find it just makes it a little easier. So that way you can see how much is going to be taking up on the canvas. We're actually going to be starting with a white background. Oops. See, I forgot I didn't lay down my color first. So I'll clear that. And you have to remember, when you have a layer in Procreate, it always starts off as blank. The white you often see is just a background that's actually not attached to your layer. So if you want to have a white background, make sure to fill that layer so it will show up on your digital fluid art. And now we're on stucco. I'm going to start with some black, actually. We'll layer the black on top. We'll start with the blue. And we're going to concentrate that blue on top. Darker first, and then we'll have the brighter streaking in the middle. And then we're going to have the tan kind of come up into it. Oops, like so. Now I don't want to, sorry for the sniffles, it's winter right now and uh, it's a little dry in here right now. So with the black, we still want to see the color through, so we're going to make sure to have brush size is at its maximum. And very gently, we're going to just pull a little bit of that black into the middle. And then just kind of stamp the brush and move it just very lightly to get that stucco pattern coming through. And you can make your edges a little darker, like so. I think it looks pretty cool. Now keep in mind when doing any cells, you often want to have your liquid image completed. So this is where we're going to go into liquify. Oops, that one. Shrink our canvas down so you can see all the edges and see everywhere you're working. I often like to start off with a higher distortion because it gives that ripply look on the canvas and start with a bit of a higher size. Keep in mind, you don't have to. You can start off super, super tiny and get really, really dealt with, detailed with it. You can kind of go medium and get that medium pull. You can go full on max and like go ham and see what kind of happens. And if you really want to make it random and see where it kind of goes, I tend to like to start large, but not too out of control. And just kind of, that's a bit small. 
That's another thing too, if you find pushing the brush cursor over to the side doesn't give you quite enough feel of how it's gonna move the paint, you can kinda just do a wiggle, see if that pushes it enough for you, and if not, adjust the size. Now we're gonna pull that paint around like so. It's creating the more texture your brushes have when you pull them apart, it creates interesting patterns, and that's why I definitely take your time and play with all the different brushes and see how the pattern will affect when pulling your image. Bringing that tan around. Now I don't want to keep pulling. Okay, you find there's lines that you don't necessarily want, but you want to kind of keep a bit of that texture. Like I said, and if you don't do these often, you want to have more of a reference and get an idea of how to move paint around on the canvas to really get that feel as if it's melting off the canvas or the screen. Definitely look at real acrylic pores and kind of study them and what happens when they get tilted. So that way you kind of have a very good reference in mind when you're kind of pushing the paint around. There you go, I think that looks pretty cool. This can kind of get more of a droopy look. Like it's melting. Bring those darker colors down. I always remember to step back. I'm kind of viewing this in the view, viewfinder right now to kind of see what it looks like from a distance. Always step back from your canvas and take a look at your uh, image to see how it looks from a distance because I find it might look good up close, but when you kind of step back and look further away, it can kind of look like a giant blob if you over push the paint around. So keep that in mind as well. Kind of take a look in how it looks from a distance and actually make sure it kind of still looks pretty interesting from far away, not just like one giant straight line or one squiggle. Cool. And again, it's nothing really fancy or anything, just to get the idea of how to work with the cells. So once you like your image, we are going to be backing out of Liquify. And if you haven't watched my tutorials before, um, when creating transparent bubble cells, we created a second fresco brush. So that way we have the individual little stamp pattern of the grain versus it all compact together, which I'll show you the difference. Go into a second layer, do white so you can see the difference. This is what it looks like when it's packed down and you have an, and that's the brush that it came with and we've manipulated the brush just to be a little bit more separated. But I find I want it a bit more, I want a bit more jitter and a little less spacing. We still want it a little packed together but not as much as the other one, like so. Now with this one, when you're doing your marble cells, I like to pack down a few different colors and kind of go in the area. So let's say in this whiter line area, you want to have it a little darker. So we're going to lay down the fresco in the pattern. Because the tan is there, we're going to lay down a bit of the tan and a little bit of the white. And then we're going to go back into liquify. And just like a bubble cell, we're going to use expand. And we're going to expand outwards. I like to have my more on a distortion so it looks a little more ripply. Oops, 
Now was I silly into this on the second layer? Yes, I did. Delete that. Sorry. Go back. <laughs> Make sure when you're doing your marble cells that you're on your first layer because it does need to be on the paint that you moved around. My bad. <laughs> back into the black and make sure you're on the right brush lay down that paint again make sure it's a bit of tan Oops. and a little bit of white and let's add some blue and then a bit of white the nice thing with this is you can lay down as many colors as you want and it will give it kind of an interesting pattern and now we're going to go back into liquify now it's actually on the right layer zoom in so you can see what's going on, expand. And now just like our expanded bubble cells, start creating a pattern that you like. Oops, a bit too big, distortion's a little too high. There we go. Like I said, you can overlap them, like so. Get some really darker ones with a darker center. That's where you're getting those mixed colors. Looks really cool. Now, oops, <laughs> a little too big. That's okay. How did Bob Ross used to say it? Happy little accidents. <laughs> I think. I could be wrong. I haven't watched the Bob Ross tutorial in forever. Okay. Now keep in mind you don't have to have your bubbles as compacted as I've made mine. Oops, sorry, that's my water bottle. Always drink water and stay hydrated. But yeah, you don't have to have them as compact as these are. You can spread them out and have them individual. I'm just doing this so that way you can really see the different patterns that emerge. So the big thing with marble cells is we're using the reconstruct option next. So don't exit your liquify feature if you want to create marbled cells. And with marbled cells is you want your brush to be smaller than the bubble because you're going to be working within the edges of it. And the nice thing is reconstruct if you tap the screen around where you haven't touched any of the paint. It won't move it, but you can kind of see your cursor. So let's start with this outer one. You're going to just tap very gently. And this one's going to be a little bigger. And the lighter you touch, it'll reposition that paint back. We'll zoom right in so you can kind of see what's going on. And it creates this interesting marble effect between the paint that's underneath and the pattern, the grain of the original fresco brush. So we'll do this one. We'll see if we can get almost exactly the right size. That way you can kind of see what it does in one big swoop. I find this bit hmm, being finicky here. That's a little too big. That should be right. So yeah, and just tap the screen very gently. It creates such an interesting pattern. It almost gets these like little bubbles in the inside as well, which is pretty cool. I mean, because in any of the ones that are similar to the size that you worked with, you can kind of go around and do those ones first before switching your brush over. And I find too few with the marble itself, because you're reconstructing it back to the original paint, you can tap the outside and it will bring it back in and kind of give it that more distorted look as well. Or it will bring in that original pattern of that fresco brush, which is quite pretty. And like I said, you don't want to overdo it too, because the harder you push, it'll just revert it back to that original stamped image. So you want to push very gently and only work through a little bit of those layers to create that marbled effect. Now isn't that something, eh? And depending on how lightly you tap it, you can get all these little different bubbles 
kind of little cells if you want to work in small sections with inside and not necessarily get that full rounded marble effect. You can get some individual little cells going on and again you can work that outer edge to bring it down into a wonky little shape. Let's see how this darker one's going to turn out. The darker ones I find always have interesting patterns. And it's just so relaxing watching that paint turn into these little weird patterns. It's definitely mesmerizing and manipulating those outsides. Again, I tend to do a few dots on the inside to get kind of a more individual celled look. But again, you can manipulate it very carefully so that way your cursor is pretty much exactly the same size or very close to. You just don't want to do it bigger because then you don't want to affect the patterns that you've done on your cells in around it, especially if you don't want to mess with them and have them um, lose that pattern because again, if you overdo it, it'll just look like the fresco pattern and then you'll have to start over and go back and expand them out. But if you want to see what looks like just whole, oops, you get it right to the right size and right in the middle and just do one big one. And again, very gently, the lighter you tap it, the lighter it will create the pattern. And as you can see, because it's already gone through all the layers in this little spot, you can see the paint underneath going through. But again, now we want to shrink it right down so we can play with those edges and really get that wonky effect. Because no cell's perfect. And again here, like where this one looks very rounded, you can go back in and very gently go around the edges and blur them out a bit. So it kind of looks a little more funky. And we'll quickly just go through the rest to get that marbly pattern. Like so. Move it over. <laughs> Bring in those edges a bit. Like I said, definitely creates an interesting pattern. You start to get the bubbles showing through underneath. You can bring it right down to see the edges of that fresco brush. Just finishing it off. And there you have a giant pile of marbled cells. Like I say, you don't have to do it quite as large as I did. It does create an interesting effect on the canvas. Now keep in mind, you can go out of liquify now and put more paint down and come back in. But once you leave liquify, whatever you've done with the paint in this area, you will not be able to reconstruct anymore. So make sure to finish reconstructing and gain the marble effect that you like. But you can always go back in and manipulate the shape and everything with the other tools. It's just the reconstruct option when you back out and go back in like this. If you try to, doesn't matter how big you do it, try and they're dry. They're not moving anywhere. <laughs> so keep in mind, once you are in liquify, do all your reconstruct first and then you can go back out and do a section. The nice thing is though, if let's say you do one section, you love it, you back out, lay down some more paint. You didn't like how this section's turning out. You could then hit reconstruct or reset on your liquify and I'll just reset those ones and not the ones you've done over here. But with these ones, we wanna, oops, kinda do the little fly away ones that you see. And if you do it really, really tiny, you can get some really tiny marble cells and give that more of that blowtorch fall off look. Lay those down quickly. And I'm just doing white and you can play with it more. And like I said, the white will still create a bit of a marble effect. 
Oops, that's way too big. And as you can see, resetting it did not affect the other ones above. Drop that right down, drop the distortion. And again, just creating little bubbles. This one will create a not so much of a larger bubble. And you guys used to just playing with it and having fun. So there's those ones. And you can reconstruct them right away if you want or go back in. It's a, just doing the white itself creates its own interesting little marble effect and then bringing out those edges. These ones you're going to want to zoom right in and bring your cursor right down to low. Make sure you're on reconstruct and then just tap it to get a bit of that marble pattern in there. And when you zoom right back out, you know you can't see it too, too much. It does give a little interesting effect. So back in to expand. I said this one's just a little guy. We'll make them a bit bigger. This one, make them kind of large and then have two little, have two little buddies kind of popping off. So, we'll do one large one, do little guys. Like I guess you can do it one of two ways. You can do all your expanding first and then go back and reconstruct, or you can do it in sections. So we have these ones here. You can also mix and match and do bubbles and transparent bubbles along with your marble cells. But I find doing the same technique around the same Bundle kind of keeps a little more uniform. I'm reconstructing inside and on the outside to get that interesting pattern. Bring it in a little. Like I said, you want to work slow because if you push really hard, it will just revert it back to, like here, I'll show you an example. Like if I were to make this a little too big and I just kept there and kept moving and kept moving it and kept moving it, it's just going to go right back to that original pattern and not give that desired effect. So you want to take your time and tap the screen gently to get that marble effect. And that's why I work with a size a little smaller than the camera or than the thing itself or the shape itself and bring in those edges. Get an interesting looking cell. And these guys you can again I boo-booed and <laughs> did a little too large. Spam them out again. Drop that size down. And there you go. That's a bit better. I'll finish off these ones over here quickly. Oops. bigger but smaller than those. This one we're going to make it really tiny. Again, really small. And then reconstruct. I find if you expand them all first it's best just to shrink it then you already know what you kind of worked on last. And bring it in. You can zoom right in and kind of see what you're doing. And 
you have your marbled cells. Now again, I'm just doing a small section on this tutorial so you get an idea. And you could put these literally everywhere. It's a little hard to see, but like I said, if you can get an idea, it would look like a cross. It'd be really pretty, but this would be a very long tutorial if I space it out, but I'll leave it zoomed in so you can see what it looks like. And these are marbled cells on Procreate. And if you recreate it, definitely tag me because I love seeing everybody's artwork and what you guys come up with. And yeah, and I have tutorials online if you want to check out some more. And I'll see you guys next time when we create some more art. Bye.